Welcome to Election Inspector Training from the Orange County Board of Elections. On behalf of Commissioner David Green and Commissioner Louise Vandermark, we thank you for your service and your time to be able to review this training and we'll go over everything that you need to know to work on Election Day. The first thing we'll be doing today is it'll be an overview of the expectations, how to open the polls, table duties, machine duties, and how to close the polls. Expectation and job duties, the basics. The basics are that we ask that when you do come to your uh, assigned polling place in the morning, please be prepared to be there for the entire day. We want you to be able to have all the supplies that you will need throughout the day, make arrangements for child care, pet care, bring any medications. Um, please dress in layers. Dress is professional casual. And we also want you to have an enjoyable experience. So please bring any food items that you will need for throughout the day. Assignment letters. The assignment letters for working on each election we try to put them in the mail from our office one month prior to the election. As soon as you receive that letter, please send that acceptance or declination back to us as soon as possible. We have currently over 300 election polling places throughout Orange County, so we need to hear from you as soon as you can. The polls in Orange County are open from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. We ask that all election inspectors please arrive at their polling site at 5.15 a.m. This will allow all of you to meet each other for your team and to be able to unpack and have all your supplies ready for those first voters to come in at 6 a.m. Be courteous. Of course, we know that you're always going to be courteous to the voters, but we also want to remind you to please be courteous to your teammates. That is so important to be able to process voters and to have an enjoyable time. Following the procedures, we'll go over many of those procedures today, but to find out the latest and greatest up-to-date in information, please, when you open your black supply bag, you will look and the first thing you will see if there are any updates pertaining to the election that you will be working, it will be on a colored sheet of paper and you will take that out and it will be a memo from both of the commissioners. Please read that out loud um, or send it around and have each inspector read that and then initial the corner of it that they have that information. Um, whichever works best for your polling location, but that is the procedure for you to be able to follow on election day pertaining to that election. The inspector timesheets, they are new, they are green, and they are located within your baggy number one envelope. This will be new, and you will find that in your black supply bag. You will not only have your pay sheet in here that you will all be signing, everyone working at that location for that district, you will also be placing your absentee ballots, your any registrations that you receive, your poll watcher certificates, voter tracking sheets, your ballot tracker, your affidavit transfer forms, and again, your timesheet should be signed first thing in the morning when you arrive. Please keep in mind that table inspectors are paid $225. The chairperson is paid um, with a stipend of $250, and that includes the use of your cell phone. Machine inspectors are paid $250, and the green go bag inspector receives an additional $15, which includes their mileage. Payments that for all inspectors are mailed six weeks after the election. We need to process all of the payroll information and you just need to wait until those six weeks and we promise to have the checks to you by then. Table inspectors, job duties are to process the voters, manage the poll books, 
uh, address any um, ballots and privacy folders that need to go to the voter and troubleshoot any voter issues. The machine inspectors will open and close their procedures, ensure security of the voting machines, and troubleshoot any ballot issues. The chairperson. The chairperson is elected by all of the table inspectors for each district. The chairperson must have worked at least one election and they cannot be an, a machine inspector. They will keep things running smoothly. They do have added responsibilities. Most of all, it would be paperwork. And, but they are not the boss. You are all the boss. You work as a team. You all have the same vote when making decisions. You must have a cell phone and they will be able to have access to the new New York State Board of Elections voter lookup. Also, the chairperson will call or email the Board of Elections with the Green Go Bag inspector's name and cell phone number. We do have something that we have added to the Board of Elections office, which is a Board of Election, it's called BOE Inspectors, um, email address. You will be able to email us the information of the chairperson's name and cell phone number. Also, again, that green go bag inspector's name and cell phone number. We will be able to then continue communications throughout the day with that information. So either give us a call, please, by 9 a.m. Or again, please send us an email. That email address is located in the front of your red binder. The polling place coordinator. Some polling places with four or more districts will have a coordinator assigned to that location. They will assist in finding uh, the correct election district for the voters when they come in. The coordinator is not the boss, but they are an important part of your team. They do wear a traffic vest and uh, to be able to move the flow of traffic of voters to the correct place to be processed. Bilingual inspectors. Some polling places will have bilingual inspectors assigned there. They provide bilingual assistance to the voters who speak Spanish. This includes the entire polling place. So if you are in a polling place with those four or more districts, or whatever the number may be, feel free to please have that voter escorted over to the bilingual inspector to receive that assistance. Bilingual inspectors are a part of your table team and they complete the same training and follow complete the same duties also as all fellow inspectors. Uh, if any voter is requiring additional assistance for Spanish, um, the Spanish language, please contact our office. We have two full-time uh, Spanish interpreters there and coordinators, and they will be able to assist any voter that calls. The green go bag person. The green go bag person inspector uh, for all table inspectors in the polling site will select one inspector who will deliver the green go bag containing the election memory card to the location that is designated by the Board of Elections. We'll discuss that further at the end of this overview. The chairperson or machine inspectors cannot deliver this bag. They have their own duties that they will have to complete at the end of the evening. So it will be an, an, another inspector that will be able to handle that duty and task please be sure that the green go bag inspector does have their own um, tr transportation to be able to get to that location. They cannot wait for someone uh, to come and pick them up and transport them. They must have their own transportation at their polling place. You are at your assigned location and it's 5.15 a.m. Introduce yourself to your team on election day. Be sure to wear your name tag. You must have this on throughout the day to be able to better assist the voters coming in. 
We want you to introduce yourself to your entire team. And then what you will do is take out the election poll worker list, which would be in the plastic sleeve of the gray cart. Then we will say, let's get started. The first thing you'll do in that plastic sleeve, which is located right in the front of your gray cart, you will take out your diagram. The diagram is of all the um, election equipment that is located within your polling place. Please verify that everything is in its proper location. As we said, then you will take out your poll worker list. Here's an example. I have Minnesink District 1 and District 2. It will tell you the inspectors, bilingual inspectors, machine operators that are all scheduled to work at that location. Please take attendance, check that off, that they are all present. If someone is on your list and not present, please call the Orange County Board of Elections office so we will be able to contact that worker and be able to follow up with possibly sending someone new to your location to assist you on that day. The other items that are located um, within that gray cart would be your alligator clip. This is um, a metal device that you will place on your poll worker table. It will also house your welcome to the district sign that you will have placed there for all voters to have them be able to come to see you and sign in. The other items that you will have is a cardboard affidavit voting booth. This will unfold, it will be on the shelf, and you will place that on the corner of your table for any voting that will take place as an additional privacy booth. You will also have your black supply bag. This will be located also within that um, gray cart and you will take that out and bring that over to your table as soon as you can to be able to have your supplies and be able to start to set up your morning. The other item that will also be in your uh, gray cart would be your vote here sign. It is a sandwich board sign that you will place where the voters will drive in, either at the entrance for by a sidewalk or actually by the parking lot entrance. And please set that up because that will make the difference between a voter coming in at 10 minutes to nine and they will be able to easily access possibly their new polling place and be able to have that opportunity to vote. The black supply bag. The black supply bag will hold all of your supplies as a table inspector that you will need to be able to process voters throughout the election day. One of the things that you will notice is on the gray cart and also on the black supply bag, these ba items will be sealed. You will take those seals, you will tear them, and you will store all of the supplies that you will use throughout the day, and you will place them and return them back into the supply bag um, for us to be returned to the Board of Elections office. So basically our saying is, what goes out must come back. So after you open that black supply bag, the items that you will find in that bag will be the poll books for all voters to be able to sign. You will find the red binder, which will have all the information that will go over. You'll have your supplies for the entire day, baggie number one and the baggie number two supply bags. You'll have privacy sleeves that you will use to be able to store ballots in throughout the day as you give them to the voters. And you will also, if you work in the, and are signed, to the lowest district number within your polling place, you will open up the black supply bag and you will take out the image cast bag. This image cast bag is the supply bag for the machine inspectors. Please, as soon as you open that bag and you find this image cast bag, please walk this right over and deliver this to the voting machine so the inspectors can start processing and opening up the voting machine. The red binder. 
The red binder will be your reference guide throughout the election. As you are working, you will find all the paperwork that you will be needing to be able to set up the polling places, close the polling places, and to be able to process voters in between. The first item you will find is the chairman's checklist. The chairman's checklist is a list of all your supplies. You will want to check that to make sure that you have everything that you will need throughout the day. If you do not have something, please ask someone else to double check because a second set of eyes is always helpful. And if you do not, then please call the Board of Elections and we'll make sure that we have those supplies delivered to you. The one thing that we do recommend is that you can have one person, one inspector, read the checklist and the other one can actually locate those items, set them up and be able to verify that they are there. The other item would be the step-by-step -step guide. Please, these always are being updated. So we ask that you use these every single, the morning of the election, each time to be able to make sure that the process is continuing to be able to better serve the voters. The other form that you will find within this red binder is, uh, you will find that there will be a ballot tracker. The ballot tracker is a um, form that you will be able to keep track of the numbers of voters and paperwork that you will be receiving. If you've received any absentee ballots, if you've received um, any emergency ballots, voided ballots, BMD ballots, if you have bilingual um, uh, voters that have come into the polling place that need assistance, the form is set up that the numbers are pre-populated and what you will do is just use a hashtag and you will mark through each time that that applies to your polling location. Then we also have a form which is keeping track of the number of voters that you have. In the first column, you will record the stub numbers for the ballots that you have issued. You will do that on an hourly basis. Please set your smartphone, please um, bring an egg timer, whatever works best for you as the inspectors. You will record those numbers for auditing purposes because it's much easier to be able to uh, keep track of your numbers each hour than waiting until closing the polls at 9 p.m. and trying to refer back to if a ballot was voided or if something else took place. So you'll be able to quickly process your um, numbers and your paperwork at the end of the evening. You will also be keeping track if there's any lines at the privacy booth and also if there's any lines at the voting machine. You as inspectors are the eyes and the ears of the Orange County Board of Elections. So we need the information from you to be able to better serve you as inspectors and the voters on election day. As a reminder, in the past, when you were completing all of your paperwork, you placed them back into your red binder. There is a little update and change that we are doing for this year to try to make it easier for you to be able to complete your paperwork and process. So at this time, just as a reminder to please place your uh, ballot tracker form and your number of voters uh, form in this baggy number one envelope. So as soon as you're done with your reference guide throughout your day, you can then place all of your paperwork that you gather and you apply throughout the day in this bag. The totem pole. This is an example of what the totem pole you would find within your polling location. The totem pole is an informational guide for voters. It will have all the information in regard to the ballot and also the sample ballot. You will then take that from the gray cart and we would ask that you please place that between the front door of the polling place and the table where the voters would be signing in. This will allow the voter while they're online to be able to have that information to be able to cast their ballot.
the privacy booth. The privacy booths will be located throughout your polling location. They will be available for all voters to be able to complete their ballot. As the one thing you will notice in this picture is the curtains have been removed. So this will make easy access for all voters to be able to easily complete their ballot. You will also notice that there is a lower level. The lower level has, is ready for handicap accessibility. So we will ab be able to service all of our voters' needs. The other form of voting um, booths, privacy booths, will be uh, this version that you may see in Orange County. There's also an additional version that you may see depending on the polling location that you are assigned to. The other item that I'd like you to keep in mind is you'll notice that this is a split screen. On the other one side, there is still the totem pole. You'll notice that right next to the privacy booth in this screen is a totem pole. This needs to be placed by this version or the previous version of um, polling privacy booths. And you need that because you need to always provide voters with as much information as possible, which is located and included on your totem pole. So please, if you have this version or the other version, you may in your gray cart find additional totem poles. Take those out and please set them up next to either of those privacy booths. Poll watcher. A poll watcher is a person appointed to observe the election day proceedings in an election district. A candidate cannot serve as a poll watcher. We have provided you with a manila envelope, which is located within your red binder, to be able to use if a poll watcher does come to observe in your district. The poll watchers within your district will have a certificate that they will have to present for each table and district. Okay, if you have three polling places, uh, districts within your polling place, you will need to have, as a poll watcher, a certificate for each of those districts. Poll watchers have a poll watcher guide and that is located within your manila envelope. And as we just showed on the screen, there is also instructions to remind all inspectors. Also within your manila envelope will be stickers. Each district will have in their manila envelope different colored stickers that they will use. When that inspect, uh, poll watcher gives the inspector the poll watcher certificate, you will take that and you will write on the sticker their name and the candidate or the political organization that they are there to represent. They will have to wear this, all of these stickers, throughout the day, any time that they are observing in your district and location. The only items that a poll watcher is able to do is they stay a few feet away from your table. You can provide them with a chair and they are only to use their eyes and their ears. They use their eyes to be able to proof signatures in the poll book. They are allowed to stand and lean over to be able to look at that. Um, they are also able to um, hear the voter's name. So if a voter comes into your location and you have a poll watcher present and the voter provides you with their name to be able to look up, please, as inspectors, repeat that name out loud back to the voter to confirm that that is the correct voter that you are getting ready to process. The name is correct. And this way, the poll watcher will be able to hear that. So that is why we want to make sure that we accomplish those two items for poll watchers. Electioneering. What is electioneering? It's any advertisement, display, or speech containing a political party or the name of a candidate. You will notice that I have and am holding two 
distant markers. One is in Spanish and one is in English. We would ask that you post those 100 feet from the polling place. That is that there is no electioneering that can occur between the entrance of the polling place and the 100 foot distance markers. Please, when you go in the morning, please count out the 100 feet and be able to place these signs. We ask that you do place them together um, for any voters or any candidates that are coming to that location. And also keep in mind that it is not just a straight line from the front door to that 100 foot marker, it is the circumference of the building. So please keep that in mind when you are going to check and verify um, any campaigning. We do suggest that exercise is a good thing for people. So every hour, if you remember that you're, someone will be going and writing the stub number down every hour, that it's a good thing to be able to get up and to move around. One of the things we'd ask that you do is please go outside, check outside your polling location, be sure that there is no campaign signs, there's no one handing out flyers, no candidates within that 100 feet markers. Also, go into the privacy booth areas, check the pens, make sure that they're all ready for any voter to be able to come in, make sure that there's no campaign material that has been placed on those privacy booth screens. We also recommend if you want to check any other areas um, to just be able to police that and make sure that there aren't any ballots or anything else within all of that location. Primary elections. Only voters permitted to vote by a political party may vote in a primary election. It is for the party to determine who their candidates will be for in November. So poll books, as you will see in this screen, are color coordinated, designated by political party. You will also see that I will hold up some affidavit ballots. They are also color coordinated, so will all ballots be. So please, when you are issuing um, the ballots to the voter as per the party and the book that they have signed, please make sure that all of the information is correct when you are processing and assisting the voter. If the voter insists on voting and their name does not appear in the poll book, Please, you can provide them with an affidavit ballot of the party that they are requesting, or please contact the Board of Elections and we're happy to assist you. Processing the voter. Ask the voter for their name and locate their name in the poll book. The voter's name is in the poll book. Then ask the voter their address. The voter's address matches the poll book. Using the signature cover, you will then go through the poll book with that name of voter and you will be sure to cover their signature. You'll see that there's a signature there and you will cover that as the voter is preparing to sign their name in the book. Record the ballot stub number, which we will go through on a future slide, and two inspectors, one representing the Republican Party and one representing the Democratic Party, will initial the poll book. Issue the voter their ballot inside of a privacy sleeve and instruct the voter on how to mark their ballot. What we would ask that you do is you'll take your pa ballot packet you will tear the ballot from the packet and you will record the stub number that is located in the corner. You will then take that ballot and you will place that ballot in the privacy sleeve. And again, at that time, please remind the voter when we say mark your ballot to circle in on the ballot next to the candidate's name that they are choosing to vote for. Direct the voter to the privacy booth. And of course, when they have completed their ballot, then they can proceed to the voting machine to insert that and cast it. 
turn the poll book around. This is something that we need all inspectors to remember. You will find the poll, the voter that comes in to sign your poll book, and we're going to use Sarah as our example. Next to Sarah's name, you will see that it's there is a line here that it says signature of voter. That is the line that your voter will sign on. So the first view was a view looking at the poll book, finding the name. You will turn the book around so the voter is able to sign on that signature line. So this would be the view as the inspector that you would be looking at while the voter is preparing to sign their name. Use your signature cover to cover up the signature that exists and you will then have the voter sign. You may turn the poll book around, not that many times, but please, it's to remind all inspectors to please turn that poll book around so we are able to then scan the voters that have voted for that election, and it's easier for us to be able to process voters. So you will see that the signature matches when you remove the signature card, and you will be able to, again, issue the ballot for the inspector. Don't forget to record the stub number in the corner. You will see that marked right here next to the name of the voter and their signature. And there will also be a place for the inspectors to sign uh, their initials. Remember, one representing each party. Inspector data sheets. The inspector data sheets are located in the front of the poll book. You will actually go to the front first page, open that up, and the inspectors will sign uh, to be able to attest that all the information that they are providing within those inspector data sheets are accurate. As we said before, you are our eyes and ears on election day. So what we would like you to record is if anyone has passed away, if they're deceased, a voter, if they've moved out of county, please record all of that information for the Board of Elections to be able to continue to update our records. Processing name changes. If the voter's name is not found in the poll book, please ask the voter if they have changed their name. If that is the case that they have, then you will go to that original name that the voter is currently registered under. You will have them sign that name right on the line, and then right above that, have them sign their new name. So they will sign their old name and their new name, and we will be able to update that for the next election. Please make sure that you remember to record that information in the inspector data sheets. So then we'll go on to voter showing ID. This all has to do with information that is located in the poll book. With this, voter showing ID, if it says that within the signature box, you are required to ask for ID. It is the only time that you are required to do so. So the voters are only required to provide ID when it states ID required in their signature box. A list of acceptable IDs are located inside the red binder. Some of those suggestions are um, whether it's a motor vehicle ID or it could be actually a pay stub or a utility bill. The entire list is located there that you would find. Never handle an ID or ask for any identification if it does not state so in the signature line in the poll book as it appears here. It is against New York State law to ask a voter for ID. If the ID required message is found in that signature box and they refuse or cannot present that proper ID, they must complete an affidavit ballot process, which we will refer to shortly. Absentee voting. If it states absentee voting in the signature box of the voter in the poll book. Allow the voter to sign in the signature box and vote on the machine. So if someone had made plans to, and made arrangements to have an absentee ballot and their plans change 
And that's fine. If they come to the polling place to vote on the machine on election day, please have them be processed. They'll cross out absentee um, voting and they will sign their name and they will be issued a ballot as anyone else who would be entering the polling location. If anyone delivers an Orange County absentee ballot to your polling district, please accept them. These are different samples of envelopes that may be coming in to your location. And you will simply just say thank you very much. Again, verify that they are an Orange County um, absentee ballot. And then you will submit this and place this in the baggie number one envelope to be returned to our office and count it at a later time. Voter lookup. There is now New York State voter lookup. It is something new. The chairperson can access this website by a smartphone or a tablet. You will need to have Wi-Fi at the location that you will be assigned to and working at. The voters can also be given this website information. The website will only show the polling location where the voter is currently registered. So it's great for information for the voter. Um, the only thing to keep in mind is that in case that voter has moved, it will not provide that updated information. So please feel free to contact the Orange County Board of Elections if that is the case. If the voter has moved, call us and again, we will be able to assist you and the voter in sending them and finding their new polling location or, and you will be able to give them an affidavit transfer form. These are some screens as to what it would look like while going through the process for the voter lookup. There will be different screens that you will go to. The voter will be able to do that, or you as an inspector will be able to do that after obtaining the proper information from the voter. It's not total access for people to be able to look up um, whomever without that information. You do need to have all of this completed, the screen, to be able to have your information appear. One of the things you will notice, it will provide election districts, the towns, assembly districts, um, senatorial districts, and Orange County legislator districts. So there is a wealth of information by being able to assist the voter with New York State voter lookup. But if by chance you do not and are not able to provide the voter or yourself with that New York State voter lookup, we always have our street finder. And our street finder would be used for any time that a voter comes into your polling place and you may look it up and it's filed by address. So as on this screen, you will see that this is Greenville that is located and the one that I'm holding is Warwick. And it ranges from district numbers all the way from nine up to 31 just on this page. Again, you will locate all of the information based on the street and house number when that is completed and you have found that information. So if the new address is in your district, record the voter's name and their new address in the inspector data sheets. And then you will be able to have the voter sign the poll book and issue them a ballot. If by chance the new address is not in your district, you will be able to complete an affidavit transfer form. You will be able to give that to the voter and instruct them to the new polling location where they will be able to vote. There is a sample that we do have. Um, this is the, what it would look like and all the information can be completed by the election inspector at the district that they are at currently. You will complete that. I do have just a sample one filled out and it will be sending them to the new location where they are scheduled to, um, and supposed to be voting and receiving a current ballot. So what they will do is you will hand it to the voter. 
The voter will go to that location. When they arrive at that location, they will then hand that to the inspectors working at the location that they have just arrived at. The, voter, the inspectors, you, will be able to look at this and be able to automatically provide them with an affidavit ballot and be able to have them finish um, voting. So remember, the first inspector at the polling place will complete this form after they have either used their street finder, called the Board of Elections, used New York State Voter Lookup, any of those or all of those options. And when they have that proper information and the location, they will complete this form, get, provide this to the voter, and send the voter on their way, and they'll be able to vote at their location that they now currently reside at. Processing affidavits. When that voter comes into your location, and if they have a name that might not be easily spelled, I want you to always remember that we do not ask for identification. We have provided every um, polling place and district with a small white pad. Please have them complete the information and write it out on the pad. And this way you will be able to research any of the voters um, via this mechanism. If they do offer you their ID, ask them, please, um, you can put that away and we'll be happy to have you write down your information, whether it's calling us again, looking it up on voter lookup, or whether it is using your street finder or even just locating them in the poll book. This is the mechanism to use that. When you are done with that, please take the piece of paper and place that in your black supply bag and we will take care of shredding that information when it does return to our office. Now, as far as the affidavits, if the voter's name is not found in your poll book, ask the voter for what their address is and use your street finder to find if they belong in your district. If the voter belongs in your district, then have the voter vote by an affidavit ballot, give the voter a notice to voters um, form and uh, affidavit ballot envelope. Make sure the voter fills out the envelope and signs it. The first thing you would want to make sure you are providing them is a notice to voters. Here is a sample. It is English on one side and Spanish on the other. You will have the voter read this and there are two options. There is an affidavit um, ballot option or a court order, which we will be touching on both of these. They will return this form to you and they will advise you as to which process they choose to accomplish. If they state affidavit ballot, you will then hand them a ballot and a envelope, affidavit envelope. This will be done, as you will see on the screen. Please verify the correct ballot for the district that you will be um, supplying the ballot to. And also, you will complete the town and the district. You will write that down. You will give both of these items to the voter. The voter will go to your cardboard privacy booth which will be located at the end of the table or within constant sight distance that you will be watching and they will go behind this to be able to complete their paperwork. They will complete the ballot. This is the size, actual size of the ballot and this ballot will not fit and be able to be processed via the voting machine. It must be submitted and sealed into this affidavit envelope. So they will complete this. When they have done so, they will then take it, place that, and seal it in the envelope. Please make sure that they have completed all of the paperwork. It is English on one side, Spanish on the other, and they must sign and return this to the election inspectors that will be working at the table. At that time, you, as the inspectors, will then be finished with the voter and you will record this information in the inspector data sheet. 
After you have done so, you will then take the ballot and affidavit and you will place that into the orange affidavit bag. It will be placed in here. If by chance this bag becomes too full, please contact us. Do not wait until the bag, is, you can't get any more ballots in. We need for you to call us as soon as it starts to become too full and we will send you more of them for you to be able to continue to process voters. You will notice this bag has a zipper on the bottom. It is sealed. The only ones who are able to open these bags would be the election commissioners. So they will stay sealed for the remainder of the voting and those ballots will be counted by the Board of Elections staff at a later time. This is what the uh, inspector data sheets would look like if and when you would be completing them. Again, that's the orange bag. And this is a, just a reminder that we send out to all and a message that, to be for all of our inspectors. This is a no-no. You cannot place loose ballots inside that affidavit bag. All ballots must be in an envelope sealed by the voter and signed to be able to be counted and processed. Affidavit process ballot review. If the voter is not in the correct polling place, but their name is in the poll book, they get an affidavit. If the voter refuses to show ID when the, a note in their signature box requires them to do so, they get an affidavit. If the voter refuses to take an oath and refuses to answer questions with respect to a challenge, they get an affidavit. Ballots must be placed in a completed, signed and sealed envelope. This is one of the most important parts of processing voters. And then placed in the orange bag. And again, they will be processed and counted at the Orange County Board of Elections office. Court orders. On election dates, a Supreme Court judge is on duty to meet with persons who are wishing to register to vote who had not timely filed their voter registration. If the judge grants permission for the person to vote, the voter will be sent to your polling place location and district to vote on the machine. Their name will not appear in your poll book and they will hand you a completed court order signed by the judge of, uh, that happens to be sitting and serving on duty. In Orange County, there are two Supreme Court judges. One sits at the Orange County Board of Elections office in Goshen at 75 Webster Avenue, and the other is at the City of Newburgh Courthouse, which is located on Broadway in the City of Newburgh. These judges both sit during um, the times of 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. So any voter who comes into your polling location will need to go to those locations, answer the questions, and then be processed by the judge and we have samples of court orders here on the screen. What you will do is this will become your poll book. You will see in the top corner here that there is a signature box and there is a place to record your stub number and the initials of the two inspectors that would be issuing the ballot. The one thing we do wanna remind you is there is a spot in the middle of the court order that the judge may write some notes in, so please just double check that before you process your voter. This is a sample of what the signature box will look like, the signature, stub number, and the initials. Please record that in your inspector data sheets, and then you will be able to have the voter go be issued a ballot, and they will vote on the machine. Election day problems or concerns? Don't wonder, don't assume, and don't guess. Please call the Orange County Board of Elections. We have multiple lines and all of our phone numbers are posted on the front cover of your red binder. Give us a call. Please do not leave a voicemail message. Only speak to a staff member and they will be able to assist you.
Privacy. A voter's privacy is sacred. A voter can be issued up to three ballots. Never touch or take a ballot from a voter. Voided ballots. The voter will write void on the ballot. The voter will fold the ballot and put it into the green void bag. If by chance, when this happens, you will then issue another ballot for the voter. You will then write down the new stub number and you will reinitial if the inspectors have changed during that time period. If not, the initials will stay the same, just the ballot number will be changed. If a ballot is found in the privacy booth or at a table, counter, etc., the ballot will be voided and the two table inspectors, one representing the Democratic Party, one representing the Republican Party, will then write void on that ballot and will then each together put that in the green void bag. Remember, please do not tear ballots, just write void across the entire front of the ballot and return those to the Board of Elections. Remember, Always mark the voided ballot on your ballot tracker. You will need that number for the end of the evening to have everything be correct in your paperwork. Sample ballots. Sample ballots will be reviewed for the upcoming elections. This is a sample of a Supreme Court ballot that will possibly be appearing this year. They have multiple candidates that they are able to vote for. In this ballot, you can vote up to five. You will see that on the uh, top line of all of the positions for each candidate running in that frame. This frame, there will be, you can vote up to five, and you can vote as a voter in any means or column that you prefer. You could vote for corners, you could vote diagonally, you can vote for any one that a voter chooses to cast their ballot for. The only thing that we do ask is if by chance um, inspectors, while they're handing out the privacy sleeves and the ballots and you're reminding them to mark their ballots, to circle in that um, area next to the voter's name, you might also want to remind them to please read that top position line and vote for the number of candidates if they choose to uh, within that frame of the ballot and position. Write-in ballots. A write-in ballot contains a space specifically reserved for write-in votes. A voter may cast a write-in ballot for any person whose name does not appear on the official ballot. The inspectors can direct voters where to write in their choice, but cannot advise on whom to vote for or spell the name of the candidate. As you will see on this screen, the write-in ballot line is at the bottom part of the ballot that all voters will be receiving. Opportunity to ballot. An opportunity to ballot only occurs during a primary. A voter has the option to write in the name in under any office. You will see that we will show a sample. The sample ballot here is for a party, political party, that does not have a candidate running, but someone has taken the opportunity to file the proper paperwork and be able to be a write-in candidate. That is the opportunity to ballot, to be able to write in. If this ballot is within your um, election district, simply advise any voter that it is their opportunity to write in a candidate's name. 
This is another sample of that opportunity to ballot, um, ballot that may be in your location. This is where a political party has chosen candidates. They are on the first line, and the second line is for write-ins for any candidate who, again, has taken that opportunity to be able to have a write-in campaign. Voter intimidation harassment. What is it? It's any attempt to make a voter feel fearful, unwelcome, or otherwise uncomfortable in exercising their right to vote by use of tactics, including, but not limited to, bullying, pressuring, arm twisting, browbeating, threatening, annoying, irritating, discussing political topics or issues. Stereotyping. Stereotyping is when you judge a group of people who are different from you based on your own and or others' opinions and or encounters. What do you do if you see it? We're New York State. If you see something, say something. The oath you take as an inspector is in effect not only for election day, but for the entire t year of your term from July 1st of one year to June 30th of the following year. In that oath, you swear to uphold the Constitution of the State of New York. Therefore, should you witness, be a part of, or hear of any type of harassment as outlined here, you are duty bound to report such abuses to the Board of Elections and or the Attorney General's office at that number, stated here on this screen. If you call the Board of Elections office, we will be happy to assist you, the voter, and be able to process any complaint that does come in of this harassment. Challenges. A challenge must be made before the voter votes. What can you challenge for? The voter's signature does not match the poll book. Someone using the same name has already voted, or a voter is alleged to not reside in or at the address that they are registered from. Who can challenge? You, the election inspectors, poll watchers, or any registered voter within the polling location. We have provided every polling district with a packet of these challenge affidavits. What will happen is, the challenger will come to the inspector table. They will challenge that voter while that voter is preparing or has just signed the poll book. Then they will go and they will complete this process and this packet. You, as the election inspectors, will ask the voters that are online to please wait while you complete this paperwork all voting throughout the polling place at the privacy booth and at the voting machine will continue. It's just at the table that you will be pausing the voting process because what we need is we need all of the election inspectors sitting at the table to participate uh, with this determination. They will complete the packet. There are questions that the voter will be asked and oaths that the voter will take. The challenger will take an oath and then you will wait and you will hear the responses from the voter and you will record those um, answers to those questions. After you have done that, you will then go to be able to determine what the decision is for that voter. One of the items that you will do with deciding the challenge is if the voter refuses to take the oath and answer the questions, the voter shall not be able to vote on the machine. The table inspectors will vote. What they will do is if they vote that the voter is qualified, the voter may vote on the machine. If they have a tie vote, then the voter is given the benefit of the doubt and the voter may also vote on the machine. If the, vote, the inspectors vote to determine that the voter is not qualified, the voter will be advised of that determination and the voter will be told that they are not eligible to vote. If the voter insists on voting, 
go to your packet and on the back page you will find that there will be a oath, it, that a qualification oath that they will need to be administered. You, at that time, the voter will take that oath and they will sign under the penalties of perjury that they are eligible to vote at that polling location. You will then take that um, packet and you will submit that and place that in the challenge affidavit envelope. After that is done, if the voter will be able to be processed and vote on the machine after they have that oath um, that they have received and accepted. The voter will then, if they refuse to take that oath, they will be preceded and advised that the only way they will be able to vote is through an affidavit ballot. Then remember to record any challenges in your inspector data sheets. Machine opening. Then for the machine inspectors, and we remember we work as a team, not just at the table, but we include our coordinator and our machine inspectors all within that teamwork. With that being said, we will be able to assist them if they need assistance. Um, if they have to step away from the machine, they may come over and ask a table inspector to go over and to be able to step in for them. Now with this, you will see on the screen that there is a step-by-step -step guide to be able to open the machine in the morning. If by chance a machine inspector is not at their polling place, we ask that a table inspector of that same party please go over and be able to start working on the machine. You will complete this step-by-step -step guide and the setup. You will also have a seals report. With that seals report, you will find the seals on the voting machine. They will be pre-populated in and on that form. You will verify all of those and set up any seals for continuing and operating voting in the opening of the polls. You will also find that you will have a um, statement of canvas. That statement of canvas is set up um, in two spots and parts, which is the first part would be opening the polls, which is the lighter part of the form because in the morning it's light out. And then at the end of the polling process at 9 p.m., you would complete the second part of the form which would be the closing of the polls. And since it's normally dark at night, this would be the shaded darker part of the form. Now at this time, we're going to watch a video that will advise you and show you how to open the polls. Hi, my name is John Galo. I'm the Orange County Voting Machine Technician. Today, we're gonna do a short overview on setting up and closing the BMD machine. It's now 5.15 on election day. We've walked into the polling place. We found our partner. After that, we need to find the location of the machine, the blue privacy screen, the cone with the wait to vote here sign. Once we've done that, we then need to go to the gray cart and remove the floor plan, bring it back, make sure that the machine is located in the appropriate spot, then lock the wheels, after we've done that, we can then proceed to the lowest district and retrieve our image cast bag. And after we've done that, we we'll bring it back to the table and we're now ready to open the machine. Now that we've retrieved our image cast bag with the red bag from the inspector's table, we're now going to match the serial number on the red bag with the serial number on the machine if they match, we can proceed. If they don't match, we need to call the Board of Elections. And assuming that they match, we're now going to proceed to open the red bag. Now that we've checked our red bag and it's correct, we'll break the seal. We need to set that aside because we need to record that later on the uh, statement of canvas. We're now gonna remove our paperwork seal report statement of canvas, the lanyards, one for each uh, machine operator. 
If you have more than one district, you're gonna have a card that's going to have the different ballot IDs on it, which you'll need in the event that someone wants to use the handicap accessible voting part of the machine. And the last item stays in, it's the clear bag with the yellow um, paper where the administrative card goes into at the end of the night, put it back in the red bag. And after that, we can now take our inventory items out of our image cast bag. We have the green go bag, which we need at the end of the night where the card comes out for that. We have our timesheet. We have a black bag, that's abandoned, rejected. We have our blue bag, the write-ins, which is again, end of the evening. And we have paperwork that tells us how about printing the tapes at the end of the night, which you need to do two types, two, two tapes. We also have instructions, what goes in the red security bag, what goes in the blue ballot bag, and what belongs in the image cast ballot bag. And you have additional instructions that also replicate what we just spoke about. Now we've opened the red bag, we retrieved the lanyard with the machine key. We can now remove the cover and begin to open the machine for operation. When you're lifting the monitor, the easiest way to do it is by holding the monitor arm. Now we're ready to uh, open the machine and distribute the ballots to the tables. Remove the ballot bag, break the seal, maintain the seal. You need to record this on your statement of canvas, open up the ballot bag, remove the ballots, and there'll be laminated sheets in here that indicates which districts you have. You'll take these to the tables, and the tables will take care of distributing them to the appropriate districts. For our purposes, we're putting these back in the bag and placing the ballot bag back in the machine, making sure that you leave the flap out so that ballots will fall into the bag. We then need to remove the BMD inventory bag and the shields that we need for the BMD voting. We're gonna check our inventory, make sure we have an extension cord and our ATI items that we need to plug in later. We have our extension cord. We're now going to plug in the machine and turn it on. To turn the machine on, you make sure you have to push the bottom red button. Then you close the door, reseal the door, and while the machine is starting to boot up, we can then position the monitor so that people can vote in the handicap accessible mode. Using the arm, we pull the monitor arm down We then take the monitor and we rotate it and we position it so that someone in a sitting position can see this. Now that the machine has begun to beep, we're ready to insert the security key. And when we do that, we get a keypad. We enter the code one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, hit enter. And now the machine will start its process. And the first thing that's gonna happen in a minute or two is it's going to ask you to check and verify the date and time and year. And if it's correct, you hit yes. If it's not correct, you hit no. 
and it gives you the option of adding or subtracting um, to each of the functions, the year, the month, the day, the hour, and the minute. Um, if everything is okay, you can just hit no, and then it'll proceed to go through the security checks, and the next issue that'll come up will be um, that the machine is ready to open the poll. At that point in time, we'll continue. The, 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 the screen did come up about the correct time. It is correct. So going back to the previous conversation, we're going to get to a point where the machine is going to come up and it's going to be uh, system ready, open the poll. And um, at that point in time, we will select open the poll. It's at that position right now. And we're going to select the zero tape and it's going to print a zero tape. We only need one copy of this. It's going to, at the end, it's going to ask you if you'd like a second one. You're going to hit the no button. And once it gets finished printing, you should have a message on the screen that says system ready. You hit no for no additional copies, remove the tape, and your machine now should have a flashing green light, and the screen says system ready. It's now ready to accept ballots. Now that our uh, zero report is run and the polls are open, we now have to complete our paperwork for the instruction sheet. Go to the table, fill out your seal report, fill out the uh, Canvas report. And after we've completed that, we can now proceed to get the machine ready for voting. First thing we can do is place the privacy shield, make sure that the back flap is up past the scanner. Then we're gonna place the vote here sign with the cone five feet in front of the voting machine. And then we're going to step aside to the side of the machine and wait for our first voters. Uh, we have chairs, we can sit, we don't have to stand all day. And the situation is we're here to ensure voter privacy first and to assist second only when asked enter the voting area. All other problems on the machine should be handled ver verbally. If it beeps, ask the voter what the message is and respond with an appropriate answer to the specific issue. The voter's right to privacy must be preserved. Do not handle the voter's ballot or take a ballot from them. Do not watch them insert their ballot into the scanner. Do not press any buttons on the scanner for the voter unless you are asked to by the voter. Do be attentive when you hear the machine beeping. Advise the voter to review the LED screen. Do stand at the side of the machine. A ballot review. A ballot review allows the voter to see how the machine reads their ballot. A ballot review request must be made to the machine inspectors before the ballot is inserted into the machine. We now have a voter that's entered the area and wishes to have their ballot reviewed before casting it. As the machine operator, you can now enter into the voting area using your security key. 
You then select ballot review and you select visual. And now you step back into your area and the voter inserts their ballot. Screen comes up showing them how they voted for various contests. They continue to hit the next button until they've reviewed all of the contests and then they either hit return or cast depending upon whether they were happy with their selections. We hit cast and it casts the ballot. Voter assistance oath. For a person other than an inspector who assists an individual in voting, this must be taken before the person rendering assistance enters the booth. Any relative, any caretaker, anyone who is going to provide assistance to a voter must be given this oath and that information must be reported in the inspector data sheets in the front of your poll book. Diverse voter needs. A voter may ask for someone to assist them. This can be provided by two inspectors, one representing each party or a companion. Assistance may not be provided by the voter's employer or an agent of the voter's union. The voting machine can accommodate varying needs, vision and mobility impairments, voters in wheelchairs, and those who are unable to read and write. Accessible voting. The table inspectors will issue the voters a blank ballot and a BMD card. This is shown in the screen and we also have a blank ballot with a stub number on the edge of that to be torn and recorded just as you would process any other ballot and a BMD card. The BMD cards are located uh, within your supply bag and you will complete those and present those to the voter. As you see here, the BMD card, meaning a ballot marking device, which is what a voting machine is also referred to, that will list, you will list the town, the ward, the district of the voter. If it is done during a primary, you will list the party of that voter and also the ballot ID number. The ballot ID number is located on a ballot that you would normally issue to a voter. It will be down in the left-hand side of the ballot pack. You will take that number. That will also tell you the election district, the town, and any other information in regard to that polling district. So please record that number from the ballot and then the voter will proceed to the machine inspectors and they will set up the voting session for that voter to be able to vote. Emergency ballots. Emergency ballots are when your machine is not operating and you need to be able to process voters. You will notice that the first thing you will do is open the slot which is located in the front of the voting machine. It opens slightly, you'll use the key, and ballots will be placed in this secured area of the voting machine. They will not be counted, but they will be posted there for security reasons. After the machine is repaired, you will then go and a pair of the machine inspectors will open fully the front door of the voting machine and they will gather and take out all of those ballots that have been cast. Remember that when the machine is first inoperable, one inspector will open that front slot for votes to be cast. The other inspector will be on the phone to the Orange County Board of Elections advising us so we can send a field tech to that location 
They will also go over to the table to be able to notify the table inspectors. And what they will do is as they write the stub number down, they will write in the corner of the poll book that number and they will put EB, emergency ballots. So we would have a time frame for the ballots that would be issued. Then after, as we said, it is repaired. Uh, just a suggestion, use the privacy sleeves that are provided. And as you are gathering those out of the front of the machine, place them in there until you as the inspectors are able to close the door, lock it, and then start to proceed to feed the ballots into the scanner as all other voters do throughout the polling day. Remember, most important thing, that you never discuss what you see on a ballot with others, not even to the other inspector. You will just silently go and you will put those through and run them through. If you have a line of voters, let four or five voters cast their ballots and then ask if you could please go into the line, be able to send again, maybe a half a dozen through, step back, let voting continue at your location until you have submitted and inserted all of the ballots that you have in your privacy sleeves. With that being said, abandoned and rejected ballots. An abandoned ballot, an abandoned ballot is if the machine returns the ballot and the voter has left. This may happen during that time frame that the voter has submitted and inserted their ballot into the emergency ballot slot. Then they have left the premises. So now you are getting ready to insert them in those ballots into the actual voting machine to be have their ballots cast and counted. If by chance the machine does reject that ballot, you will be able to take those ballots and you will place them in the abandoned rejected bag. This will at the end of the evening be sealed and they will be counted by the Board of Elections when the bag is returned to our office. The other thing that might take place with a ballot is it may be rejected by the machine. When it is rejected, it would be if the machine does not accept the third attempt of the ballot. We use as a scenario, if a voter comes in and voids their first ballot because they made an error, they go and something happens as they're going to the machine to insert it and the ballot tears. If that was the case, they would void their second ballot. They go back to the table to be reissued their third and final ballot. When they do that, they go up to the machine to try to be able to vote and the machine again rejects that third ballot. Again, at that time, it would be placed in that abandoned rejected bag and again, count it by our office. It's 9 p.m. and it's time to close the polls. You will remember that every voter online at 9 p.m. will be able to be processed and will have the opportunity to vote. We suggest that an inspector at the table please go and stand at the end of the line and if any voters do come in after 9 p.m., they are advised that the polls have closed and they will stay on that line until the last voter is processed and receives a ballot. At that time, then everyone will start to be packing up all of their supplies uh, to make sure that everything is stored properly. So there will be a check by check list uh, that you will be able to use. Uh, again, we suggest one inspector reads, the other one can actually uh, accomplish all of the tasks that are listed. And the machine operators also have a step-by-step -step guide, and we recommend the same for them. It's now nine o'clock, it's time to close the polls. If there are no voters in line, we can proceed with closing the polls. If there are any voters in line, you have to wait until they're completely finished voting, and then we can start with the process. Now, we're assuming that there are no voters. 
We're going to check two things first before we start the full process. We're going to check our emergency ballot box to make sure that there's no ballots inside. And seeing none, we can then relock it. We're also going to go to the back of the machine. And at the bottom, there's a re red return button. And we're going to push that. And when you hear that beeping sound, it indicates that there is no paper in there. And the reason that has, has to be done is we have had an instance where people have cast their ballots in the back of the machine. Now that that's finished, we can now place our security key. The administrative menu is going to come up. We're going to select close the polls. And then we're going to say, yes, we want to close the polls. And while that's happening, the other machine operator can be removing the handicap accessible items, such as the ATI and the shield, and returning the uh, monitor back to its appropriate position. Now that we've closed the polls, we've run a second tape. We've taken it to the table. And they've announced the results. They return the second tape to us. We can now take the power down option on the administrative screen. We answer yes. We heard a beep. And it's shutting down. At this point in time, we need to wait a few minutes, a few seconds. The light's on the front of the machine. We'll continue to blink until we open the door and hit the button at the bottom, which is our next step. We've now powered down the tabulator. We now need to unlock the door. This seal needs to be placed on the seal report. And we're now going to power down the machine. And we're going to wait, make sure that these lights on the front are dark. We're going to remove the ballot bag. And we're now going to announce to the table that they can place in all of their unused ballots, stubs, and other items that we need to put in the ballot bag. Now that we've uh, powered down the machine, removed the ballot bag, if there are any write-in ballots, they need to be removed and taken back to the table. And the number needs to be entered on the statement of canvas. The ballots need to be placed in the royal blue bag and sealed with one of the small tab white seals. That number also needs to be recorded. As anything else from your abandoned and rejected ballots, that also needs to be recorded. At this point in time, we can now proceed to the front of the machine. We've unplugged the machine. The lights are off. We can now safely break the green seal, open the door, remove the chip, insert it in the green go bag. Remove the two seals that are inside, the one with the white tab and the green. Reseal the green go bag. And the assigned inspector that's to deliver this to the appropriate central location can now leave with this bag. The remaining operator needs to now reseal with these green seal. the machine. And this seal number will be recorded accordingly on your seal report. The table inspectors have now brought over the affidavit bag and the void ballot bag. The number of ballots inside of these are going to be recorded on your statement of canvas. The seals 
are going to be recorded on your statement of canvas. These sealed bags are going to be placed in the blue ballot bag. You're going to make sure that all the poll books are in there, all of the unused uh, ballots, the stubs, and any other appropriate items that need to be in this bag. You can then zipper up this bag, close it, and seal it with one of your white seals, the long white seals that should be in your supply bag. You then set this bag aside, and we can then proceed to close this door. Now we've closed the ballot box door. We now have to seal the ballot box door. We have to seal the ATI. And then we can remove the yellow seal from the front and remove the administrative um, chip, which we then need to put in the clear bag with the yellow piece of paper. We need to little, remove a little white chip. This needs to be sealed. Put back in the red bag. Of course, this, all these seals need to be recorded on the uh, statement of canvas per your instructions. This port needs to be resealed with the red seals that you would have in your supply bag. And we have to get the rest of our paperwork finished up before we can seal this and take this red bag away. Now that we've uh, removed all the seals from the machine, we now have to complete our paperwork, return to the table, and on the statement of canvas, record the remaining seal numbers, protective counter, and on the seal report, record all of the new seals that we placed on the machine, insert, all of the paperwork, including the lanyards and the keys, in the red bag. And when that's completed, be sure to seal the red bag. And while I was doing that, the other operator was putting the styrofoams and getting the machine back into its um, original state. And then we now have to put the cover on. And when we finish that, both of us then need to take the blue ballot bag and the red bag to the appropriate location that's been designated to us in our instructions. The green go bag. After the voting machine is shut down, the machine inspectors will give the green go bag to the designated table inspector for delivery. Please keep in mind that the table inspectors will continue to pack and store all of their supplies with the rest of their table team. And the machine inspectors will, when they have completed their task entering the memory card into this bag and sealing it, they will deliver it to the Green Go Bag Inspector. How to read the results tape. Read the results tape for each race in each district on the tape. This will be done if a poll watcher is at your polling place location. The two machine operators will print the results tape. They will come to the election table and ask an inspector to read the results to the room. They will read it as follows. Councilman, vote for two, Highlands. Janet Rose, two. 
John Smith, zero. Marianne Morrow, zero. Vincent Edwards, one. Write in, one. Vote totals are not to be read. They are for Board of Election use only. Return the tape to the machine inspectors once you have finished reading the results for each race. Do not give this tape to anyone else. Write-in ballots. As you will see on this screen, there is a write-in ballot slot in the voting machine. You will count those ballots, take those, and you will place them in your Nassau Blue write-in ballot bag. This will be recorded on your statement of canvas, and you will seal them when you have all of that packed to go into your bag to be delivered to the Board of Elections and counted in our office. As you will see on this statement of canvas form that the darker shaded part of the form is for closing of the polls. One of the items that you will place an information on this form is the write-in ballots. And again, you'll go through this entire, all the steps to be able to close at the end of the evening. What goes where form? You'll find this form in your red binder. You will also see that this is color coordinated. You'll see that there's a blue bag, black bag, everything is titled red bag for the machine operators and for the table inspectors. It will tell you how to properly store all of your supplies and how to place them for the Board of Elections to be able to open the next day and start counting all of our ballots. Clean up. Clean up the polling place. Pick up any garbage. All food items must be thrown away. Return tables and chairs to their original location. Turn the heat down and the lights off. All election material must be stored properly. And remember to return the A-frame sign to the gray card. Also, while outside, please be sure to pick up the 100-foot distance markers and bring those in to be stored properly also. The machine inspectors will travel in one car to the location designated by the Board of Elections to deliver the blue ballot bag, the red security bag, and the second results tape. This is mandatory. All inspectors must ride in one car, the machine operators, to that location. They will sign that they have delivered those items, and then they will return to their polling place to then be able to leave. The other thing that we always want our staff to remember, inspectors, that we leave the polling place at the same time, all together. We do this for security and safety reasons. Thank you for serving the Orange County Board of Elections, and we look forward to seeing you on Election Day. Thank you.